How's it going boys? Johnny Superb Man here, and it's a sad time to be a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs. My goodness gracious. Year after year, it just seems like things are getting worse. We keep on thinking and telling ourselves that we're going to be better next year. We're going to be better next year. Look at all these younger players that are growing up. You know, there's no way we're going to miss the playoffs this year. And we actually end up being a worse team this year than we were last year. And I've had it. I've had it up to here. But one thing that's even pissed me off more is all the hate that a guy like Phil Kessel is getting. I mean, Phil Kessel, he's the face of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think that's the reason he gets all this controversy. If you can't see the, the skill that Phil Kessel brings to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you're blind. And you shouldn't even watch hockey, right? And... The way the fans treat him, the way the uh, the damn media ask stupid questions like, are you uncoachable, right after uh, Randy Carla got fired, you know? If I was this guy, I'd be getting pissed off. I might even want to get out of Toronto, right? So I want to go over Phil Kessel a few things and give my opinion about him because I don't think he deserves the hate that he's been getting in Toronto here. I mean, the guy, he's in his sixth season with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I think a lot of the hate comes from him being the face and the Toronto Maple Leafs only making the playoffs once in his tenure with the Leafs, right? And the guy's getting older. I mean, he's still very much young, but he's not young enough where it's like, okay, we're building for next year. This guy should be leading teams deep into the playoffs at 27 years old, right? But I love everything about this guy. I mean, he hasn't missed a game in five seasons. And a big reason for that is he is a perimeter player. He's an offensive player. He's not going to go into the corners, throwing the body, getting physical, getting it into fights. You know, he might uh, throw a two-handed slash out there when somebody tries to beat him up. But uh, you know what? There's 12 spots on your roster for forwards. You got one guy who's all offensive and one of the best offensive players in the NHL, by the way. I'm not going to get into arguments about who's better or not, but one of the best. And if you argue that, you don't know anything about hockey, whatever. I think one of the 12 spots can be uh, filled up by Phil Kessel, and it's, it's about building around him, all right? I mean, the guy's got six straight 30-goal seasons. I know he only had 20 in the shortened year, but that was 20 goals in 48 games. And based on his track record, if it had been a regular year, he would have hit 30, all right? So six straight 30-goal seasons seasons but in those 30 goal seasons you know he's usually always a minus player and that's where people always that's what people always go after you know the defensive or lack of defensive side the physical side it's like they just completely forget about all the goals and offense that he puts up on a shitty team and just looks at everything negative now he does have a career uh plus minus of minus 56 you know but to me that's a result of the team that he plays on rather than his play itself i mean his last year with the Boston Bruins, he had 36 goals in 70 games played, and he was a plus 23. I mean, put him on the Nashville Predators. Put him on the New York Rangers, and his plus minus will be just fine, all right? So that's my thought about the uh, defensive side of, of Phil Kessel. I mean, I, I've seen him play in big games. He's a big game player. Even though he's only played 22 playoff games over his career, he has 13 goals and 21 points, and he's a plus 11 in those 22 games played. And when I say big game player, I'm not talking about in the middle of the regular season when the Leafs are 0-9 in the last uh, last 10 or 0-9 in the last the 9, right? And everyone's making it seem like, oh, if they lose this game, the season's over. No, that's not a big game. The guy needs some players to play along, uh, alongside him. I've seen him in the playoffs. I saw him in the Olympics, all right? I know all you Americans saying that he didn't do anything. Your whole team didn't do anything in the gold medal game. The only two players on offense that I see doing anything in that gold medal game was Patrick Kane and Phil Kessel all right I'm sticking with it he needs a team around him the problem with Phil is he's a winger and the expectations are so high for this guy people are thinking he's he's Jonathan Taves or Sidney Crosby right he's a freaking winger wingers have always needed a team around them to succeed look at a guy like Alexander Ovechkin for God's sakes arguably the best winger since since he's come into the league he hasn't been able to get the Washington Capitals to the Eastern Conference Finals I look at a guy like Rick Nash he came in for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Here's a big, hulking winger who could put the puck in the back of the net. What did he get them to the playoffs once? Not even a playoff victory before he was traded to the uh, New York Rangers? Or how about a guy like Marion Gabrick? I think he got as far as the Western Conference Finals in his first few years with the Minnesota Wild, right? But did he ever lead them to a Stanley Cup? No, it wasn't until he got traded to the LA Kings with a team around him that he enabled him to, you know, contribute to a Stanley Cup run. Uh, wingers always need a team around them. There are, you know, goaltenders, defense, centers, and then wingers. That's my opinion on how you build a team. You got to build it from the back out. Wingers are your last thing. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are full of wingers, man. That's the one thing we don't need is wingers. We don't have defense. We don't have centers. All right, so... That's my that's my thing. Phil Kessel, he's a winger. You can't you can't raise your expectations from him. He's not going to win games all by himself. He's going to make players around him better. He's not going to be on the penalty kill. He's not going to win faceoffs. He's not going to go into the corners body checking. He's going to put the puck in the back of the net. I know he's not doing it right now, but the Toronto Maple Leafs are just in shambles right now. And you know, 
when I look at Phil Kessel, I like to compare him with a guy like Patrick Kane. All right, now obviously Patrick Kane is you know much better. I'm not going to get into an argument about that. He's proved much more. All right, Con Smythe, he's got the uh, the golden goal to win a Stanley Cup. Fine, but Patrick Kane himself even said, "quote He's probably the best guy I've ever played with. He's unbelievable." All right, that's Patrick Kane saying that, and I'd like to think that Patrick Kane knows what he's talking about, and. The reason I compare Patrick Kane with Phil Kessel is because they kind of are that same type of player. Patrick Kane is more of a complete playmaker. Um, you know, when you watch him, he's sifting up the ice. People don't know he's going left, he's going right. He's just as good on his backhand as he is on his forehand. And while Kessel's more of a speedy sniper, you know, you rarely see Phil Kessel deke to his backhand. He's always more of a point A to point B, as fast as I can, skate around you, and when I'm in the zone, fire a puck on the net or send a pass off, right? But they're... they're offensive wingers. That's why I like to compare them. And Patrick Kane is a cap of 10.5 million. Kessel has a cap hit of 8 million. 2.5 million less than Kane. Anyone who says Kessel's contract is too much or he's not worth it or he's not good offensively, you're crazy. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm serious, man. Compare him to other wingers in the NHL like Patrick Kane making 2.5 million less uh, that's about right for uh, for Phil Kessel, right? So I really have no problem with Phil Kessel. I, I truly do believe that he would be a 50-goal scorer on a good team. Um, he would have to have a lucky season to have a 50-goal season, like uh, Corey Perry or uh, Vincent LeCavalier. You know you know they're good goal scorers, and they can have that 50-goal year if things go right for them. And I'll give you guys an example. When we were still a good team, we were in the middle of our like 10-game winning streak or something like that, we went up against the Anaheim Ducks. And in the third period, we had a one-goal or two-goal lead. And Phil Kessel scored two late goals within, like, two minutes of each other. The last five minutes of the game, Phil Kessel comes down and scores two goals. Why is he able to score two goals? Because the Anaheim Ducks have to open up because they want to get back in the game. And therefore, Phil Kessel's speed can counter uh, counterattack any defenseman that try to pinch up in the play. That's where Phil Kessel can be outstanding when he's on a winning team but when he's on a shitty team like the Toronto Maple Leafs and he's playing from behind the whole time and the other team knows just shut down Phil Kessel because he's their best player we don't have to worry about anyone else that's when it becomes really hard so I really do think that Phil Kessel could be a 50 goal scorer and you know what I really hate is that all these trade talks about Phil Kessel but in my mind it does seem like it is the right time to move Phil Kessel out of Toronto I hate that I just said that right but it does seem like we're not going to be a playoff team next year it seems like the way that Shanahan and all the TSN analysts are talking about it, we have to go through another rebuild, right? We haven't made the we made the playoffs like once in like the last ten years or whatever, and now we have to go through another rebuild. Phil Kessel's already 27 years old, which is still very young for an offensive player like that. He hasn't had injury problems, but you're looking at a team that's not going to be ready for two to three years. Well, then all of a sudden he's 29, 30 years old, and. I really feel like Phil Kessel should be leading a team to the Stanley Cup right now. So, I mean, it's better for him to get out of this crazy cesspool of negativity when it comes to hockey. I'd hate to be Phil Kessel, man. The guy, the guy's so talented, he's got to deal with all these stupid questions from the media, all these fans thinking that they know something about hockey, calling him a bad play. I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. So, I wish Phil Kessel could stay. I wish he could retire here. But it doesn't make sense if we're not making the playoffs and we're not going to make the playoffs for like another two, three years. Trade him away, man. Let him go be happy somewhere else. All right, trade him to like a team like San Jose or St. Louis or Nashville. You got to trade him to the Western Conference. I don't want to see his ass in the Eastern Conference come back to bite us in the ass, man. But to one of those teams just because it's just such a waste to have a player of his skill floundering on such a crappy team, all right? So I wanted to give my review of Phil Kessel. And Phil, if you're listening, you're probably not. But if you are, you know, just know that there are some Toronto Maple Leaf fans, the true Toronto Maple Leaf fans that recognize your skill. I I've been a Leaf fan since I've become aware of hockey. Uh, I've gone through all these shitty seasons, right? And Phil Kessel's been a bright spot. I've loved watching Phil Kessel dominate offensively over the last five years. And I truly do want him to win a Stanley Cup. And if it's not with us, then it's not with us. So trade him to San Jose, St. Louis, Nashville, some team in the Western Conference, and let him go to work, all right? So thank you for all your time, Phil motherfucking Thrill Kessel.